Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. And warm greetings to you guys. Today we have two interesting topics about communication. We are going to dig some history of communication tools and our newest AI empowered emailing system of Unpassive. But right now we have our special guest, Francis Tay. Hi, Francis from Singapore. Hi, hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to your new channel. CM channel. Well done. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much, Francis, for gracing our uh, webinar. And again, wow. Michelle, that's a super interesting and a lot to tackle. So let's get it started, Michelle. Absolutely, Chris. It's very interesting. So let's dive straight away into the fascinating history of writing tools the instruments that shaped human communication throughout the ages. From cave walls to keyboard, a journey through the history of writing tools. Yes, yes. From the earliest cave paintings to the digital age, the evolution of writing tools tells us a captivating story of innovation and ingenuity. That's right. So I'm going to present um, a short video that I created, and I'm going to explain, um, stop as well, once in a while to explain a bit more. Okay, here it is. Okay, guys, before I start this one, I would like to give credit to the source of this information. It's from Heritage Daily. So if you want to read more about all kinds of things there of heritage, prehistoric era or geology, um, archaeology, just go there. And at the end of this video, I also give credits to the people who took these images. Okay. All right. So here it is. There are 10 prehistoric cave paintings in the world. Let's go first to Magura Cave, which is located in the northwest of Bulgaria and contains a collection of cave paintings painted with bat excrement that dated from 8,000 to 4,000 years ago. Can you imagine that, Chris? Francis? Yeah. Whoa. You're bringing us to the way, way past. <laughs> Absolutely. And now let's go to Cueva de las Manos, which is located in Patagonia in the southern part of Argentina and contains cave paintings that were created between 13,000 and 9,000 years ago. Oh, amazing. Yes, that was interesting. And then Bimbetka Rock Shelters, which is a collection of rock shelters located in central India, and contains over 6,600 paintings, rather, that span the prehistoric Paleolithic and Mesolithic periods, the oldest of which dates from at least 12,000 years. Mm, wow. Yes. Did you did, did you did you find it strange or um um how do you call that um very uh intricately done on the walls? It's not strange, but it's it's quite amazing that they could do that. At least that's the first time in, in our human history how people try to communicate. And let's go to the Americas. So this is the Serra da Capivara. It's a national park in Brazil that has the largest and the oldest concentration of prehistoric paintings in the Americas, which dated to 22 years ago. Here it is. Chris, can you see that? Uh, yes, they have created the drawing, yes. <laughs> um, turtle. I think this turtle and then... Um, Zeal or seal island, and then shrimp, right? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Francis is back. Francis, are you back? Yeah. All right. Okay, we were just talking about this uh, painting, of Francis, 22 years ago. Uh, see how they tried to to write or, or to carve turtles, uh, sea creatures, turtles, crabs, <laughs> seal, and shrimp, a lot more. Let's go further. Oh, wait. So that was in Last Gill. Are cave formations on the rural rural outskirts of Hargesh, Hargaisa, Somaliland, situated in the Wokoyi Galbid region of the country. They contain some of the earliest known cave paintings in the Horn of Africa, dated 5,000 and 7,000 years ago. Well, let's see. Look at that. It's like a pig. What what can you see out of this? Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Animals, so yes. It's like pig. I can only think of a pig, Chris. Maybe that's how pig looked like a long time ago. And then here it is um, from Libya. Tadrart Akakus is a mountain range located in the Sahara Desert uh, that contains rock art. Wow. There are paintings and carvings of animals such as giraffes, elephants, camels, but also of men and horses. Let's look at there. Right. That's, that really looks like a giraffe. <laughs> it's really a giraffe, yeah. A giraffe and then here human on on the camel. <laughs> All right. And this is the Chauvet Chave Pondart cave in the Ardèche department department of southern France. It's a cave that contains some of the best preserved figurative paintings in the world. This is amazing, guys. Um, I have been one to the, one. I have been to one of these caves, and I could really see those paintings on the on the rocks and on the walls. And there were also sightings there that the Neanderthal man, you know, from from monkeys, the transition to man, uh, is also um, has has I can also be seen there. Uh, according to their archaeological finds. So let's look at the carved thing. That's a deer. And what's that? Cow. Okay. And let's go from France, let's go to Kakadu in Australia, in the Northern Territory of Australia, Uber. It's a group of rock outcrops, um, outcrops uh, that you can find there, which which uh, would have provided excellent shelter to aboriginals over thousands of years. This is pretty interesting. Look at that. It's a person with um, uh, with a you see that? And yeah. then <laughs> somehow he's also holding a tail of a big animal. I don't know. It's amazing how these paintings, carvings can give us some history, how people communicated a long time ago, you know. All right, let's move further before we can talk more. Let's go to Spain, the cave of Altamira, which is located near the historic town of Santillana del Mar in Cantabria. 
Um, it's a renowned four prehistoric parietal cave art featuring charcoal drawings and polychrome paintings of temporary local fauna and human hands. Whoa, oh. in Spain, you have this bull fighting, right? No, uh, a man fighting with bull. Have you heard of that, uh, Francis? In the Philippines, we have heard of that. I don't know in Singapore if you have heard of that. They wear yeah. this red flag to to fight with the bull. Yeah, but definitely. this is long time ago. See how sharp it's already colored. <laughs> I really noticed. <laughs> Chris, they, they are using you know colored seeds or from the flowers and charcoal. It's coloring long time, right, Francis? Yeah, they still use the red color, right? Yeah, until now. Yeah. The red Beautiful. color is always uh annoying uh, uh what call it irritating the, the bull of the cow. It's intricately done because the, the true color of the bull is exactly what they have created. And this was done thousands of years ago. Let's move on. Okay, then let's go to Last Core is the setting of a um, complex of caves near the village of Montignac in the department of Dordogne in southwestern France. Over 600 parietal wall paintings cover the interior walls and ceilings of the cave. Let's see. Look at these. They look like dinosaurs, right? Herbivores. Mm -hmm. Chris, do you think? Yes, yes. And this a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I this, think it's an the ear of a horse or what. But this is long. Look. It was done. That was the last one, by the way. And I'm giving credit to Heritage Daily, so just go to their website. And the people who made those images, the first image was from this Lupus. The second one was from Mariano. The third one was Bernard Gagnon. The fourth one was Vitor. And then the fifth one was Theodore Hofsten. The sixth image was from uh, Roberto D'Angelo. And then the seventh, Claude Valliette. And then eighth, Thomas Schoch, and the ninth is Ramisos, and then the tenth image, um, the ones with the uh, unicorn horses, was Jack Hirschlot. I'm going to share um, carve, carvings on the stones in Alta, North Norway, where I have been. This. These are carved on the stones in a in in a wide surface stones in a national park, and there are other figures that they, they have been carved on uh, on the stone, and it's showing us the their way of hunting or fishing, and you see they are in a boat. They were in the boat, and the person is holding how. Uh, the tools to fish, and then there is one guy with a bow and arrow, probably trying to, to you know, for enemies to look out for enemies so they can get some food. I don't know. What do you think? It's a it's a hunting tool. Oh, so <laughs> that's yeah. what I see. I interpret uh, the drawing in the yes. wall. Exactly. Look, and there the the one holding on uh, is look like either he's throwing the net or he's catch a big fish. Exactly, Francis. And the tools that they are using, look at that. It, it, it's really being shown. I don't know what kind of fish they can catch. Or that's probably a bag, you know, like that. Two mm -hmm. bags and then they throw in there and then trap the net, the fish down there. But yes, guys, so this, this is the short video I created from the 
uh, wall paintings or carvings that that uh, uh, displays how human beings communicated a long time ago in the prehistoric era and what's got to do with us today how we have come um, far in our communication tools and not only that we have other tools as well like um you know uh, to communicate long time ago they use also fires and other other tools that this is general this is just one of the tools so thank you for watching so francis what do you think about all this yeah i look at uh, the uh generation after generation and the, the people who want to communicate they maybe they have difficulty in language yeah? so they communicate in pictures yeah? in pictorial picture for for you to understand and like now we are looking at the picture we try to understand the other party uh, even though we don't communicate in language right right but you don't have the far east eh? you don't have any picture for the far east from the far east i mean from asia oh from no um from that site that i have i have um checked i i only checked those but i haven't had uh checked on asia interesting because uh if, if even the chinese uh chinese language eh? the original Chinese language also come from picture. That what you do now. Oh. The picture that show you is depict a language uh, mm -hmm. or depict a story. You know, when you see a picture, uh, then you know that there's, there is a story. And, right. And now to the now to the generation, the Chinese have uh, uh, created this become a poem, a poem uh, or. Or a phrase. Huh? And when you say a phrase, they, they always point to the, point to the the picture that they see. You know? Yeah. Wow. That, that must be interesting to have a you know closer look. Um, indeed, yeah. I also um, I also know that, for example, the Chinese were the ones who invented the paper. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the early years, I think the Chinese, the Japanese, and the Korean, they are the they are the best craftsmanship yeah? in terms of, term of creating paper and uh, colorful uh, wallpaper, you know, or carpet, uh, or or this uh, so called curtain. You know? They are the they are the super uh, artistic uh, people available in the ancient days. You know? Today we don't we don't have all this because we are going to machine uh, AI you know to create for you. But those were the days is from their brain, you know, exactly. from their from their creativity. You know? Yeah, and how easy it is now, Francis, to communicate, right, Chris? We just type on the keyboard if we want to communicate. Long time ago, they have to do this on their hands and on the walls, and and on the paper, and they used parchment paper a long time ago, Francis, by the way, I think. They used the, the skin of, of the animals, uh, you know, where they can write. After from the carved paintings, they moved to parchment uh, paper or something. Chris? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, interesting things you've shown to us, uh, Michelle. Uh, as you were saying, the credits to the um, uh, people. Uh, mm -hmm in that video I, I i think you're also including we are also including credits to those unnamed people who draw those uh, <laughs> a big, uh um, drawings and the cave walls <laughs> that's right and they could be our ancestors right they could they could be in our genes <laughs> <laughs> well moving along uh, yes. uh, as civilizations develop so did uh, uh, their writing tools. So one of the earliest forms of writing is cuneiform. Did I say that right? Cuneiform, which originated in the Mesopotamia around 3500 BCE. Scribes during that time used reeds to inscribe wedge-shaped symbols into clay tablets. So wow. I'd like to show in, uh, in a screenshot 
screen share oh, for a while i'm gonna share through a through a tab browser instead for a while i'm just gonna make sure it's uh, gonna show oh i'm gonna show this first i'm gonna share this one instead so a cuneiform is a writing system that uses read stylus to create wedge shape marks on a clay tablet so here it is here are uh, some examples in 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 the Google, uh, in our google so we're so gonna stop here yeah so that that's one i, I i'd like to show then fast forward to ancient egypt where the egyptians used reed brushes and ink hmm, made from natural materials like the soot and the plant juices to write on papyrus papyrus scrolls so, and let's yeah. not forget chris about the invention of paper by the chinese as i've informed uh, francis around 100 bce made from materials like bamboo and silk paper revolutionized the way information was recorded and disseminated and i don't have a parchment paper to show but i have here um you know scroll but this is the scroll of painting <laughs> but long time ago the scroll is like where like the chinese francis i think what you were saying when they write their letters it's like this right but okay, this is just painting, guys. I'm just uh, trying to exhibit the kind of um, fabric or or the kind of paper they were writing a long time ago. And during the Middle Ages in Europe, parchment made from animal skins became the primary writing surface. So scribes used quill pens made from goose feathers and ink made from various substances like oak galls and iron salt. I remember that in uh, in, in those <laughs> movies, mm, right? Yeah, the invention of the printing press also, uh, Michelle, moving on, by yeah. Johannes Gutenberg. I hope, uh, Gutenberg, I hope uh, I pronounced Sounds it right. Familiar. Johannes Gutenberg in the 15th century. <laughs> so we're moving along uh, from past to uh, uh, the fifth, 15th century now. Marked right. as a significant milestone in the history of writing tools. Oh, we're talking about printing press. It enabled the mass production of books, making knowledge more accessible to the masses. Now, I'm, um, I intend to to share this uh, browser tab now. So here it is, the printing press. Uh, example of pictures are this one. So. The old yeah, way. The, the next the next would be this one is in black and white uh drawings already uh, yeah by artists during that time so i stop sharing wow wow and fast forward chris to the 19th and 20th centuries francis i think you were already born <laughs> we were already born <laughs> where typewriters revolutionized the way we write and in the digital age computers and smartphones have become indispensable tools for communication allowing us to type send emails and dictate messages with voice recognition technology which we do have in our emailing system we will talk about after this topic so don't go away guys Oh, so there you have it. A brief journey. It seems like uh, already uh, more than 30 minutes, uh, Michelle and uh, Francis. So through the history of writing tools from cave walls to keyboards, Michelle. Great. And thanks for joining us on this educational adventure. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And don't go away as we introduce to you our newest emailing system with enrich AI features. The unveiling of the power of O-Mail. Yes, a Chris and Michelle channel. Yes. CM channel. Okay. okay, let's move along with the second topic, Michelle. That's right. O-Mail is also a game changer. 
Mm -hmm. So today we're diving into the world of communication and exploring the groundbreaking Omail platform. What do you think, Francis? Are you ready? Sure. So us the modern AI tools, please. Yes, Omail, developed, developed by on passive is redefining the mail experience the email experience with its innovative features and seamless functionality what sets omail apart is its ability to effortlessly import contacts from existing email accounts thanks to its cutting edge ai technology and i'm going to show you a short video about our Omail. So here it is, guys. Watch it. It's very short. It's a minute video. Do you want to have a safe and exciting webmail experience? Are you wondering if your email has more rich features to make your conversation better? Well, look no further. On Passive has got you covered by launching its latest webmail platform, Omail. It has many advanced features, including folder lock, speech-to-text, and video emails that can help keep your emails safer, attractive, and richer. Omail's folder lock helps your private emails to remain confidential. That's right, the emails in these folders are not accessible to anyone. The best part of this feature is that you can lock your folder with a passcode. It also helps you segregate your important mail from the rest. And you can create as many folders as you want. You can create unique passcodes for your folders to avoid the theft of confidential files and prevent yourself from cyber crimes. Other cool features of Omail are the speech-to-text and text-to-speech tools. Yes, you can simply talk, and the AI will write all your emails. So convenient. Not only that, you can even listen to your emails on the go with the text-to-speech tool. There are four voice options to choose from. Select your preferred one and enjoy hands-free emailing anywhere, anytime. Isn't it fantastic? If you still think this is not cool enough, then listen to this. Omail has an exceptional video mail feature. You can send personalized video emails to your contacts on special occasions like birthdays, anniversaries, or new year. Don't limit your excitement with the emojis anymore. Send a video email to have a more personalized conversation. It's a better way to have an official exchange as well. Isn't it great? Express your feelings more freely by using Omail's unique features. So what are you waiting for? Join on Passive ecosystem by visiting onpassive.com. Register for free and enjoy all Omail features. All right. Wow, amazing video about Omail. It is really understandable. That's right, Chris. Yes, yeah, so with unlimited storage capacity, online and offline calendar integration, and synchronization across multiple devices, Omail truly offers a comprehensive solution for businesses of all sizes. And let's not forget about Omail's real game changer feature, the video mail, which you just uh, saw. Would you like to demonstrate, Chris? Or you have already on hand? Yes, there's a there's. I'm gonna uh, share a video. Uh, uh, I'm gonna share a video now. Here it is. I'm gonna play it. Yes, it talks about the 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 feature of a video email on inside Omail. Share it with your loved ones with Omail. So it's amazing. You can share it privately. Capture the beauty of your surroundings. Yeah. If you have a laptop or a mobile phone, and send the video to your grandparents or family members. Yeah. That clipping. Yeah. Yes, Michelle. Yes. Um, it's uh, plus, plus with features like smart push notifications 
and group emailing email enhances productivity while providing personalization options across various various email accounts that's amazing oh amazing and the design of o mail chris francis is both aesthetically pleasing and technically advanced with intuitive screen actions men menus and more and with top notch security features in place include, including data centers and reliable uptime of 99.9%. You can trust Omail to keep your information safe and secure. Right. And one standout feature of Omail is its integrated calendar, which seamlessly syncs events and updates on the go, making planning and scheduling a breeze. So? So, so if you're looking for an email platform that combines exceptional functionality with ease of use look no further than omail experience the power of advanced ai technology and transform your communication today with omail amazing how our communication tools has evolved and that we are part of this disruptive disruptive and future technology of omail by on passive yeah, totally agree, Michelle. So thanks for tuning in. But before go going to that, um, I'd like to show a screenshot of a uh, of a uh, of the Omail um, library. Okay, that's interesting. Also, yeah. So here's my tablet. I'd like to show it's a it's a Omail calendar. You can you can set it up for um uh, a day uh, or a week or month so mm -hmm. it's all here and we encourage you to to use it uh it's free anyway <laughs> right for michelle so yeah. check it out for yourself it's for free guys scan our qr code in our banner or click our links below to join it's for free when you register you get three free products and one of them is Omail. The other two is Onet and Otrim. And of course you get a free 14 day trial of Oconnect. Francis, thank you for being with us today. Would you like to add something on our technology, newest technology in emailing system? You're muted Francis. Wow, it's so exciting. I want to sign up as a user for your for mail. Yay! Is that, is that the, the QR code there? Yes, in our banner of, of the of of our uh, YouTube um, recording. Yeah, yes. I want to explain also the the voice to text feature that you have. In oh, we missed that to, to mention. Thank you for uh, for mentioning that, Francis. You're really <laughs> informed. Inform <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. The, the speech to text, right? And the video, the video mail. N no other emailing system has that. You can just, you know, talk and send and they can see whether you're happy or or angry. Why are you not working? <laughs> <laughs> No, that's uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank so you. Thank you very much. Until next week uh, of our CM channel um, episode. Yes, um, see you number four already, Michelle. Yes, <laughs> February what? Chris? February yes, twenty-eight yes. at five p.m. Philippine time, Singapore time. Yes, I'll definitely put that in my email calendar, okay? All right. <laughs> and send us some reminders. Thank you guys for tuning in. Bye, Francis. Thank you so much. And Bye. thank you, Chris. Bye. Bye. Bye.